In this video, we're going to discuss block shear, which is the final failure mode, which we uh, will be uh, considering when doing a tension design of a steel member based on the New Zealand design standard NZS 3404. And what you can see from the illustrations I have here is block shear is really just this tearing out of a block of material. So whether you have a flat plate and you might be uh, sort of tearing out, you know, along um, this block with sort of within the bolts or say that you have a, an angle and you're tearing out <clears throat> a, a small block just sort of on the edge there. And um, I'll just show you a few other cases as, you know, where this would uh, happen. Um, so typically, you know, when you've got a, uh, a bolted connection, which you have at least two rows, um, as I said, you know, an angle design. And then also um, these sort of coped beams, which are where the flanges are cut back uh, in order to be able to fit, uh, you know, um, within a, um, a perpendicular beam there. So that's some, a brief overview and sort of what it looks what it looks like. But you know, how do we design for it? And uh, the designs that we're going to use are based upon the work by Lipte and Greg Deerline uh, in 2017. And these equations are going to uh, be utilized in the upcoming version of NZS 3404. And so um, one of the big things to note with block shear is it is a combination of shear and tension. Um, so you have a portion of your connection which is uh, rupturing in tension and a portion uh, which is rupturing in shear. And so hence we have a, a tension area and we have a shear area and some uh, capacity associated with both. Um, so here's the overall equation. So a few things to note, uh, unlike every other sort of member design uh, that we've worked on or will work on in this uh, video series, uh, phi is 0 0.85 for block shear. Um, and then what we do is we find what the net area in tension is, so that's this here, uh, multiply that by the ultimate stress of the steel. And then we find an effective area so not the net, but the infective area of shear, uh, multiply that by 0 0.6 and the ultimate stress of the shear. And so uh, we'll just, it's worth sort of writing down there is the a ends of T is the um, net area. In tension. and a e sub v is the effective area. But in shear. And so, well, that's all well and good, and you can kind of see uh, the different patterns that these take. Uh, but I guess one of the big questions is, well, you know, the uh, ultimate stress is pretty easy, the phi is pretty easy. How do we determine uh, what these two different areas are for different cases? And that's what we're going to work through on the uh, remainder of this video. So we're going to start with um, the area in tension because it's a little bit more straightforward because we've already looked at uh, similar aspects of this. And so for um, you know, this element, you know, we're going to have uh, it shearing through you know, two of the bolts in, in this block in sort of this failure mode. And remember, this is just one of many failure modes that we have to check. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to uh, occur. Um, and so one of the, uh, we'll just put some dimensions here. We'll call this uh, G for our gauge. And um, we can see that this is uh, D of the whole divided by two and D of the whole divided by two. Uh, same thing uh, again here, where you've got DH over two, DH over two. So, and this is where D sub H is simply the uh, diameter of the whole. And so if we want to find out what our net area is, it's really just going to be this area 
uh, right in there. And so area ANs of T uh, is going to equal the gauge, so the spacing um, of our uh, you know two two lines of bolts. BG minus, um, and then we want to subtract out essentially these you know half holes here minus um, two times dH over two and times the thickness of the plate. So uh, this is, should be very you know sort of familiar. Uh, the only sort of uh, different thing or from finding this net area from when if we're using a sort of just a, a straight through failure is um, we're, we're only going to take away uh, sort of these half holes here instead of the whole hole. And that makes sense because, you know, if I just sort of sketch over in red, uh, sort of the you know, area here, that's the block. And of course, uh, we're going to take the projected area of two one half holes. All right, so that should uh, hopefully be uh, pretty straightforward. But you know, what if we have uh, more than uh, two holes? So say we've got um, you know this arrangement here, where uh, each uh, you know sort of uh, line of holes is a space G away, and of course, you know we would have um, dH over two. dh over 2, and I'll go through and I'll write the dh over 2 um, for all of these. And so if we want to draw in what our sort of block shear would be, it would be coming around the outside. It's this whole block uh, that we would be looking at. Well, all of a sudden you can see that this is essentially the same as you know, two of these versions. And so, um, you know, if this whole size is a D sub H, um, all we have to do is just kind of add up uh, each of these half holes which are getting uh, removed. Um, or the other way to think about it is we have uh, two of this. We've got two where we've got half a hole, half a hole, and another one where we've got half a hole, half a hole, and both with a spacing of G. And so A ends of T equals two times g minus, uh, we've got two lines of dh over two uh, times the thickness. So again, simply, uh, we've got two lines of bolts evenly spaced. It's gonna be uh, two versions of this. So uh, I hope that the, you know, what we showed there for the uh, t um, effective, uh, the net tension area should be uh, pretty straightforward, mostly because it's similar to what we've done before. Now, what might be uh, a little bit um, more confusing is when we start looking at this effective shear area. And so uh, I have a few examples uh, for that. Now, uh, the thing with effective shear area, it's going to be, uh, we'll just put this in brackets just to make sure it sort of pops out there. Effective shear area is going to be the average of the uh, gross area, which is acting in shear, and the net area, which is acting in shear. And so let's, uh, I think this is easiest to look at it um, via examples. And so say I've got just a, a single line of bolts, and we've got two rows of boats, bolts. So uh, rows will be perpendicular to our line of action here. And so uh, the net area is probably the easiest one to think about. It's going to be uh, the line which goes from the center line of the bolt, um, you know, straight through to the, the edge of the plate. And then the gross area, well, if we're pulling uh, this piece, well, this little chunk, again, we're looking at block shear, uh, wants to uh, come out. So we'd have uh, some uh, shear on both sides. So that is a gross, and then the one in the middle here is a net of shear. And so uh, let's just sort of work out 
what this equation would be and and then it'll sort of fall out from there so first thing we want to look at is just you know if we need to find what the average between our gross shear area and our net shear area well let's find the gross shear area first so agv equals well it's going to be the length um, which is just simply l g v in um, so the the gross length and shear um, multiplied by the uh, thickness of the plate uh, times two sides you know side one and side two now our net area for a single line is only going to have one so that's maybe one of the confusion things where single line you're always going to have two sides for your uh, gross shear uh, for your block shear hence uh, getting the the block uh, but if you're only going to have um, you know enough net shear uh, for the number of uh, lines of bolts that you have so if we write this down we would get uh, our net area is going to be uh, p minus um, we have two half bolts here uh, bolt diameters minus 2 times dh over 2 plus e minus dh over 2 times the thickness. And then if we want a, a little bit more general uh, relationship um, for this, we could do just simply going to be our gross area minus nr minus one half dh times t times one line so this gross area is just going to be the basically lg v times um, so try not to confuse this with the gross area and shear. Um, and then finally, our effective area is simply going to be AGV plus ANV over 2. So our gross area and shear uh, and our uh, net area and shear. So that's for a single line of bolts. Let's just run through this quickly. Uh, what it would look like if we had uh, two lines of bolts. And this is sort of a more classic um, uh, sort of shear case, uh, block shear case. So I'll uh, so do our, our box out here. Uh, let's do it in red. So on the edge here, the two of these together is going to be our uh, gross area and shear and then uh, down the center line of the bolts of course we'd have this block here um, this is our net area and shear so uh, we'll do much the same here we'll just sort of write this down and um, you yeah, know these equations uh, like with most of this I encourage you not to memorize them but to just sort of simply uh, think through you know, what we're doing with the geometry. Uh, the equations are there so that you can sort of go back and, and sort of look at this in more detail and uh, help sort of build that intuition so that um, ultimately you, you hopefully don't need them. You can just sort of uh, quote unquote derive them simply by looking at what the uh, problem is. So uh, our gross area and shear is going to be, of course, the full length uh, of where our bolt group is. Uh, minus uh, T, so AGV, sorry. Um, and that's going to be uh, times two sides. Perfect. Um, our net area in shear um, is simply going to be AGV minus NR, which is number of, uh, of uh, rows, of bolts, so row one, row two. Uh, lines are going to go parallel uh, with the pulling uh, minus one half times dh times t times two 
lines. And this nr minus 1 half dh is really just counting up the number of um, half diameters of uh, bolt holes, just like what we did uh, for the um, tension area. Uh, it's just a little bit more compact way of writing it and a little bit more general for, you know, if example you wanted to put this into a spreadsheet. And of course our uh, effective area is going to be AGV plus ANV over 2. All right, and so I've got just one final case uh, to look at here in terms of you know, determining effective area, and that's when we have an angle. And so with these others, you know, we've always had at least uh, you know, two uh, gross areas, uh, two lines for our gross area. Um, now, this is a little bit different, and that's because you know, the reason we've had two is because we've sort of pulled out, uh, even though we've had holes, we've pulled out a block here. For an angle, um, because we have a sort of free edge uh, coming in, uh, we're only going to have one line um, for both our uh, net and our, uh, our gross area of shear. So this would be our a g, um, our gross area of shear. And then of course we would have right in one line here, I'll we'll just draw it solid. Uh, this is our net area of shear. And we'll just write these down quickly just so you have them. AGV equals LGV times thickness. So it's just simply that uh, area here uh, times one side. Our net area and V equals AGV, which is simply this line, uh, minus NR minus one half DH times T times one line, and our effective variance shear is just going to be AGV plus ANV over two. So, I mean, there's a fair amount of equations here, but what I hope you sort of take away from it is with these equations, um, they're, they're really not worth memorizing. It's just sim the thing which I do want you to really focus on is understand that, um, you know, you're going to have a portion uh, for which is going to be acting um, in tension, and it's just going to be the net area tension, and we can just find that net area uh, like we would any other net area. And we're just, uh, the only sort of caveat is at the corners, of our blocks, we can only count uh, half a hole diameter. Uh, while if you know if we've got a, uh, if we say so yeah, corners of the blocks, we can only count half a hole diameter. While if we've got one in the middle, of course, this uh, whole projected area is taken out. Um, and that for the shear, um, we're going to have you know a portion which is going to be the uh, gross uh, area and shear, and then the net area and shear we'll find similar to how we found the net area in tension. Um, and then we just take the average of those two to get our uh, effective area. And so that's uh, that's sort of our, our overview of, uh, of block shear, and that's sort of how we end up with uh, this equation uh, right here. Um, so yeah, I, I hope you find that uh, informative and, and helpful for when you're going to go through these designs. Uh, block shear is something that comes up again and again, particularly uh, with bolted connections. So uh, with that... Thanks for watching.